Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is The Walking Dead. So, this is an episodic game brought to you by Telltale, who brought you many other episodic games. Some good, some not so good. They brought you Tales of Monkey Island, which was good. They also brought you Sam and Max, which was really good. And they brought you Jurassic Park, which was not an episodic game. Thank God for that, because it was god-awful in every possible way. It's so bad! In fact, I'm actually considering at some point just doing a video on that, just to show people how terrible it is. But The Walking Dead is, of course, based on the graphic novel, which had a television series, and still does have a television series based on it, if I recall correctly. This is a five-part episodic game. The first one is out at the moment, and it is a business model whereby you buy the whole lot. I believe later on you'll be able to buy individual episodes, but right now you buy the season pass. And as the episodes come out, they are added right here, as you can see, episode status, all the way down there. Now... This is Sight Unseen, of course. I want to try and get back to that with first impressions, because there are some games that are appropriate to play the start of, so you can actually see a bit of the meat of the game as you go in there, and there are some that are appropriate just to completely go in there blank, and this, I think, is one of those games. What I did discover is this. This is not good, is it? So there's no rebindable keys, and the control indicator doesn't even tell you anything about the keyboard and mouse controls at all. It tells you about the 360 controls. This is no use to me. I, I don't wish to play this game with a pad. It, it makes no sense to play it with a pad. Why would I? But I don't know. Maybe it'll tell me when I get into the game the buttons I actually have to press. I certainly hope so. Gameplay options right there. Subtitles we'll put on just in case I end up talking over that. Show controller buttons. Well, no, I don't want to show controller buttons because that would be silly, wouldn't it? It does have a mouse sensitivity option, but it doesn't actually seem to have anything else in there, which is rather annoying, to say the least. It does at least have a set of graphics options, which is always nice to see. Full screen mode off and on, always good. Customization, always good there too. Alright, so let's get into this. I'm wondering what kind of game this really is, considering Telltale have, of course, a history of point and clicks, but they also did, and it didn't work out very well, this game called Jurassic Park, which was very much just a quick time event game, and it wasn't good. So let's see what they've decided to do here. The Walking Dead. Onwards we go. Hmm. Right. That I like. That's pretty damn cool. I like the fact that it gives you this, these kind of indications. Hmm. I, I, I definitely don't want those hints. Uh, that, that's the kind of consequence that I would like to figure out myself. So I don't think we're going to run with that. That seems ridiculous. I guess the other stuff is clicking on what you can activate here. So, all right, let's go minimal. Yes, sounds like a plan. All right, onward we go. What I can see from the graphic style, it does seem rather cell shaded with a nice kind of outline on. Let's see how it goes. Intimidating music. Best kind of music. If it started with a circus theme, I would have been terrified slightly more, but oh well. We'll live with what we've got. So inspired by the graphic novel, one would expect it to look like the graphic novel, and hey, it kind of does. As you can tell, very cartoony look to it. Nice use of the black papery kind of outline there. Certainly a fan of that. And this weird sort of watercolor style to it. It's unique. I like it. I mean, it is a fairly similar style to what we've seen in the past from some Telltale work. Not all of it. They do do the cartoony style quite well. Well, I reckon you didn't do it then. Hmm. All right, then. Use the mouse wheel to select response. Also, you'll notice that it's actually ticking down there. You know what they say about reckoning. I don't, but I reckon it's a lot like assuming. Yeah, something like that. You know, I've driven a bunch of fellas down to this prison. Lord knows how many. Usually it's about now I get the, I didn't do it. Intriguing. I could just, silence is a valid option. In that case, I'm just gonna shut up then. Say why not. But you don't talk too much, do you? Not especially. Should look around here as well. 
Intriguing. What's a lot about? I followed your case a little bit. You being a bacon boy and all. A bacon boy? Delicious. You've got an opinion then? Wouldn't say that. I go in for that innocent till proven guilty thing. Even considering who they say you killed. I got a nephew up at UGA. You teach there long? Going on a six year. You meet your wife in Athens? Doesn't seem a lot happy about that, I does he? <laughs> I got much choice? Sure don't. You can talk now. Regardless, could be you just married the wrong woman. We have an awkward pause there, honestly. It's a very dialogue-heavy game, obviously. <sighs> I'm driving this man once. He he was the worst one. He wouldn't stop going on about how he didn't do it. He was an older fellow, big soft eyes behind a pair of smart folk glasses, and he just wailing back there. Says it wasn't him. Crying and snotting all over right where you're sitting. Lovely. Then before long, he starts kicking the back of the seat like like a fussy baby on an airplane. And I tell him he's got to stop. But that's government property, and I'll be forced to zap him otherwise. So he stops, and having exhausted all his options, he starts crying out for his mama. Mama, it's all a big mistake. It wasn't me. I don't even know how to respond to that. Maybe he was innocent. Innocent? They caught the fucker red-handed. Stabbing his wife, cutting her up as the boys came through the door. He sits in my car screaming bloody murder that it wasn't him. I think he actually believed it himself. It goes to show, people will up and go mad when they believe their life is over. I got another good one for you. This one's a little bit less depressing and a bit more hilarious, if I do say so. Hello. Well, that was unpleasant, wasn't it? That was interesting, because that dialogue choice, I guess, you had to do very, very quickly. It's a nice conversation system, actually. Reminds me quite a lot of the way Fahrenheit, aka Indigo Prophecy, did things. This kind of time system behind it. They emphasized in the development of this game, and of course in the marketing materials, that it involved a lot of choices that you had to make on the fly, which is good because I feel that the urgency of a lot of games that use these kind of dialogue systems is depreciated by the fact that you can just sit there forever. Like, it's the same problem with all the Mass Effect games. Even to the point where in Mass Effect 2, and I believe in 3 as well, they had these Renegade and Paragon interrupts that you could do, which gave you a better sense of flow and urgency. Alright, how the balls do I get out of this place then? Alright then. I guess we're looking around. Yep, that seems to work, and I guess that's the only way out, so let's just hoof the bloody thing. There we go. Dealt with. I'm really appreciating the graphic style. Honestly, I, I really, really am. I'm loving it. I just... It works for this. Because you're basing a game essentially around a graphic novel. You want your game to inspire memories of that novel for those who've actually read it. And just give a nice sense of aesthetic. And I think that they've nailed that quite nicely by the looks of it. All right. So, what have I got? Number keys 1 and 2 to select an action. Okay. Uh, it's not doing anything. What was this? I could look at the handcuffs if I like. Damn it. Guess I'm not getting out of that. Alright, well, I broke the window. I saw options pop up earlier. That was the weird thing. And now that. What the? It's just this very specific area of it. You see, that's kind of. That's silly, because. As we pointed out earlier, there were those two UI options, yeah? And I didn't want too much information because I wanted to be able to figure this out myself, but why does nowhere else, like, if you know where I'm putting the cursor here, it's only in the dead center 
that I actually get the option. That's just dumb. I don't understand that. Is it because the system is based around these little circular points and everything's going to be like that? Because it looks like it might be. You'll see the same thing here. We can scroll over the handcuffs, but I only have the handcuff option when I'm in the middle of his arm, which is actually nothing to do with the handcuffs. So I'm not a fan of that. All right, let's have a look out there, shall we? All right, well, I've selected an action. All right, so you select between the two and then you click. I need to drag myself out that window. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Let's do it. Ugh, where's boy self-evident when you need him? You're really not very good at this. <laughs> Alright then, let's go a limpin. I'm doing my best zombie impression. Practiced it for years. Now is my time to shine. And, oh my, the mouse control is, it's weird, it feels, it feels like it's sort of stuck to the center of the screen and it really, really doesn't want you to move out. I, I guess for a game like this, it's probably all right. As what you've essentially got here is like a point and click, but in the Quantic Dream style of things. By Quantic Dream, I mean the guys who brought you Indigo Prophecy Fahrenheit and Heavy Rain. Officer? God damn. Yeah, he's a bit messed Officer? up. Officer? God damn. Officer? God damn. <laughs> you, you would think that at least put some more dialogue in there or just said, okay, enough looking. Hmm. Well, you know what? Looks like the keys might be a good idea. I'd say it's a hidden object game, but not so much. I'm, I'm sure he can figure that out himself. But... The, no! That, once again, another example of this. Like, the lock is there, not here. You can't stick a key in the middle of the chain. What kind of handcuffs have you been using? Shit. Yeah, that's a bit annoying because it seems like the best way to play the game would be with the standard UI, and that minimal UI, as a result of this design decision, wasn't very oh. smart. It's gonna bite me. It's gonna bite me. See, it's moved the spot where you have to click this time around. It's like, oh, let's go back to here. No, it's actually over here now. That's silly. Very silly. Very, very silly. Now, where would it like me to click? It's the chain again. <laughs> Make the points relate to where you're actually supposed to be interacting with. Ah, my face. Leg it. Leg it. Leg it. Leg it. Hammer the S key. It's an intriguing mix, isn't it? All right, what am, uh, okay, I'm gonna make it. This is actually quite tense. What, what am I supposed to do? All right, let's not look at it. Uh, there's a ah shotgun, yes. Let me guess, it's probably got no bullets in it. Look at cop. Nope. Can I? Where, where's the gun? All right, okay, I see it. Load the sodding thing. <laughs> nope, nope. Bad things abound. I guess you can fail this. Oh, I think don't so. Make me do this. Oh, please do make me do this. That should do the trick. Ooh. That's actually quite tense. That's pretty cool. Man. You know, what they've essentially made here is very interesting. It's got a lot of point and click elements in it, but it's also got these third person elements in it, and. They've got this big emphasis on you've got to do stuff in time and the way that you interact with the objects in the world isn't it's just not going to wait for you. You've got to do so to stop yourself from getting killed, which of course is something that doesn't happen in a lot of point and clicks. There are some point and clicks where it does happen. I believe Beneath the Steel Sky allowed you to do that. The skin's all rotten and he smells like shit. What the hell is this? It's a game based on The Walking Dead, needless to say. Alright, well, I guess we didn't get the balls out for you. Now, how the hell do you do that, more to the point? Can I get up? <laughs> nope, I'm just gonna sit here like a... What the... Oi, numpty! Get on your bloody feet! Like, oh, I'm so sure... What, what the... Whoa, okay. So... 
that, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Because you'd think that it would make more sense, like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to get on my feet. But no, it's like, this becomes kind of like a hidden object object game. It's like, oh, let's click the mysterious kid in the distance instead of just getting on our feet and walking. All right. Help! Go get someone! There, there's been a shooting! Can I not just get up? That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Hmm. Now what? I'm not liking the sound of that. There's a lot of grunting and groaning. Uh-oh. Well, you know what? That's something I don't really want to see right now. Idiot! Move your bloody ass! Move it! Go on! Just don't limp! I told you, this is not the time for your zombie impersonation act! Leg it! Leg it! Some weird stilting... St kind of stuttering kind of stuff between the scenes for some reason. It only seems to be happening between a couple of them. It's not really a big deal, but it does kind of take away from the cinematic element, I'm gonna say. It's a technical problem. Get over the sodding fence! There you go. Well done. Well done. Oh no! The cell shaded bush! My deadliest enemy yet. Well, the game does have a nice sense of pace. Which is good, because pace is certainly lacking in pretty much every other point-and-click known to man. I'm interested to know, actually, if this is similar to the way they did Back to the Future, because that is not a game I've played, so I really can't make a comment on it. But I do appreciate the effort to Hello? add the sense Anybody? of urgency to otherwise what is essentially a point-and-click slash quick-time event game. But I'm not being attacked by quick-time events, which is nice, like, press B to not die! It's more of a case of, right, I've got to grab this. Quick, there is a secret hidden within the tea set. I actually am interested to know why the tea set is interactable. Fill one of those teacups with some bourbon if I could. <laughs> you would? Really? <laughs> why don't you just get it out of the bottle? It's like, well, it's, it's, quite frankly, I'd rather be civilized no! about this hell affair. What, what, what? Don't shout, you idiot. The zombie's everywhere. No ladder. I'm not getting up there anyway. This leg the way it is. What do you call this? It's a sodding ladder. Look, it's taped to the side of the tree. Do you think it's there for just aesthetic? Well, in this game it is. All right. Now where do we go? Let's go and have a limp around, shall we? I shall ride in the red trolley. It shall be wonderful. Just need to find someone to pull me now, and I can be saved. Well, there's not a lot of sense of urgency here, is there? But I Somebody. didn't expect Yell if you that can to hear happen. Me. Don't shout, you'll alert the zombies. So many mistakes being made. Ah, oh, recycling, very important. Maybe I should just check inside the house through the glass door before wandering out into the neighborhood. <laughs> yes, internal monologue, that's a very good idea. More like, no, there are scripted events inside the house, you must experience them. My immersion and so forth, the designer's vision. Well... You know, you can't expect total freedom in a game like this. In fact, you can't expect total freedom at all. Y usually, though, I like a reason that isn't... Actually, I pref I was about to say I like a reason that's not so contrived. I actually do like a reason that's contrived. That, like, oh, the gate is locked, or whatever. You know, that, that's a legit reason. And you can say, oh, well, I can't climb over it because, you know, I've got a bum leg, or whatever. That actually makes sense. But, like, maybe I should check inside the house before going on. That's... No, that, that's, that's not very well hidden, is it? I wonder right. if anybody's home. I'm gonna go with no, they're probably all zombies. Hello? Hello. Anybody home? Mr. and Mrs. Anybody zombie. Home? All right, open it. Let's go. Smash it. Nope, never Coming mind. In. Don't shoot, okay? I think you've probably figured out by this point that there's nobody in there in the first place. Gimme, gimme. I'm not an intruder. Or one of them. Honest. I'm not an intruder. All I'm doing is intruding. These people might need more help than I do. I have the feeling with all the blood all over the wall, I'm probably beyond that point, bro. Let's find out what happened by staring at this coloring book. 
Oh, it was those blasted unicorns again. That's to be expected. You can never trust them. Why do they have the horn? What's it there for? I'll tell you what it's there for. Goring. It charges at you, head down, and impales you upon its horn. Unicorns are actually horrific creatures. Is it ketchup? Oh, Jesus. It's Jesus? Really? It's not how I remember him. <coughs> you clots! What a jackass. Hey, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go over the pile of slick blood. That sounds like a good idea. What an idiot. Look at that though. It's like the blood's actually on his clothes now. That is actually pretty cool. I'm enjoying this. You know, I've always actually wanted to get into an episodic game. The reason I want to get into an episodic game is because I'm getting to the point where the way that I like to play games is kind of, I like to play either a short game because I don't really have a lot of time. Or, of course, an episodic game where it's split up so I can play the game through in, say, a couple of hours and then wait for the next episode. Or I like to play a multiplayer game. Uh, these long games I don't really get into so much anymore. <laughs> what do you think it is? It's a sodding answering machine. Or that. It could be that. Maybe it's an answering machine in the shape of a walkie-talkie. Uh, I'm pretty sure you did not. Those are like skinny jeans. You never got them in there. Hmm. Investigate ass. No. No, can't do that. I don't know what it is, but I want it. This place has been ransacked. Just about anything worthwhile is gone. I think it looks like toothpaste. I quite like that. Can I not take that? Apparently not. It also shows me I've got an object in my inventory there. I just don't know how to access it. Well, let's check all the other drawers. There are three new messages. That's a severe it I knew it! I knew it was a bloody answering machine. You'd leave a babysitter. I knew it. Now, where do they hide their answering machine? Obviously not in the cabinet with the kitchen rolls. Perhaps it's in the other cabinet. Next to the pureed tomatoes. I'm not saying it's a normal kind of family, but I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. I love the fact that... I wonder if that was there already. Mm, I don't know, but if, if that actually came from me walking through that blood, then that's a nice bit of attention to detail. It really is. Can I slip all over the blood again? That would be great. It's like... La la la, la 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 la. I'm practicing for the Walking Dead Figure Skating Championship. Now, where is that answering machine? It's clearly required for the next scripted event. There are Coloring three book. new messages. That's an annoying-ass answering machine. I haven't heard of one that ever just kept beeping and said, there are three new messages, there are three new messages, over and over again. Perhaps we'll find clues yeah. in the kids' paintings. A kid lived here. Oh, really? What was what gave it away? <laughs> was it the whole coloring book with the unicorn, perhaps? And who the hell uses a CRT television? Cables out. How terrible. I wanted to catch the latest episode of The Walking Dead. More of a survival guide for these folks. Let's have a limp. Stare at the answering machine intently for no reason. I can't imagine if there would be, fellow. Your sense of insight is intriguing. Let us investigate. Sandra, this is Diana. We're still in Savannah. Uh, Ed had a little incident with some crazy guy near the hotel, so we had to get him back to the ER and have it checked out. Anyway, he's not feeling well enough to drive back tonight, so we're staying an extra day. Thanks so much for looking after Clementine, and I promise we'll be back in time before your spring break. Mm -hmm. Left at 11.19 p.m. Oh my god, finally. I don't know if you tried to reach us. All, all the calls are getting dropped. They're not letting us leave and aren't telling us anything about Atlanta. Please, please, just leave the city and take Clementine with you back to Murrieta. I've, I've got to get back to the hospital. Please let me know that you're safe. Message three, left at 6.51 a.m. Clementine, baby, if you can hear this, call the police. That's 911. 
Seriously, Doc. I feel like kind of a dick for mocking it. Huh? Oh my. Hello? You need to be quiet. Let me guess, Treehouse? Could be. I'm not a monster. Honest. I'm not a monster. Good. Camera angles sometimes a little bit off here and there. They're obviously trying to be cinematic, but occasionally it just kind of spins around like a maniac. How old are you? Eight. And you're all alone? Yes. I don't know where anybody is. That's creepy. How old are you? I'm, uh, 37. Okay. Love the conversation system. Really where do. Where are your parents? They took a trip and left me with Sandra. They're in Savannah, I think. Where the boats are? I uh, say, so what I'm seeing from this game so far is really promising. Are you safe? I'm outside in my treehouse. They can't get in. That's smart. See? Can you see me? I can see you through the window. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh, quick time events. Uh, hit the Q button, yes. Hit the E button, I guess. There we go. You are so clumsy! Good lord! Uh, oh, what am I doing? What am I, uh, kick it. Kick it in the face. <laughs> Seriously, it's like this guy's got roller skates on or something. Give me the hammer. Give me the sodding hammer. Get off my face, woman! Hit that Q button! It's a good job I have this mechanical keyboard for extra Q button hitting power. In the face! In the face! In the face! Continually kick it in the face. I know I can pick up the hammer. I just want to see if I can just keep kicking it in the face. I think it just keeps resetting the scene every time. Yeah, you, you can just keep kicking it in the face, but there's no benefit to doing so. All right, give me the bloody hammer. Hit it in the eyes! Hit it in the eyes! Messy, messy... Messy. If that was your baby, Oh, it was the babysitter. I am so, so sorry. And I'm not paying for the cleanup. Hi there. Well, well. The Walking Dead, ladies sleep? and gentlemen. I, well, I think so, yes. Uh, you know, I'm not even going to respond to that, but The Walking Dead actually pretty damn intriguing. Surprisingly so. I'm not the talkative type, what can I say? <laughs> Shifted looking at you. Yourself through this? Yeah, yeah I think care. this is something I'm going to keep playing. It's a nice little mix. It's... You know? It's not too hardcore in terms of the way that the point and click is. It's not a bunch of really obscure puzzles or anything like that. It's more of dialogue, a good mix of dialogue, QTEs, and a hidden object game, and of course, just clicking on stuff to punch it in the face, which you know what? I'm okay with that. We need to find help before I love the graphic dark. style as well. The voice acting yeah, is top notch and it actually does seem to have got some sense of urgency and emotion and things like that. And it's pretty Let's damn go. dark. So Stay I think it looks like Telltale's done a pretty damn solid job with this, honestly. I'm intrigued to know where this goes from here. So there you go. Walking Dead, ladies and gentlemen. Currently available for $25, £20.99, or €24.99. The UK guys actually get screwed the hardest on this, 37% higher. My name is Bintola Biscuit, and I will see you next time.